Happy Apocalypse, everybody, and welcome to the one within all to another head trip through the universe. I'm your host, Chance, and I'll be your pilot as we crash this astral plane through the veil and hopefully dispel some limiting illusions while we're at it. But tasteless jokes about those two tired towers aside, we are definitely experiencing a collective tarot moment as our uh, societal tower of Babylon is rapidly being reassembled into a cybertronic panopticon. Fueling this alchemical transmutation of the world mind are some keystone media rituals like the one we just saw the 19th anniversary of, along with some do-it-yourself at-home habitual ceremonies like wearing of masks and the pointing of temperature reading guns between the temples of our head. The good news is we have a great returning guest this episode is going to help us parse out the pop culture waves into manageable particles of signature information that can help us start to tell the difference between fake new age news, alien savior agendas, and the rebranding of our elemental nature and its laws into Luciferian false light legalities, alien entities, and uh, <laughs> a lot of other fun stuff. If you didn't already know, somehow from reading the episode title, we've got the occult priestess Corinne Wilson in the house today and a huge heap of notes on what we might talk about, including the ritual aspects of 2020 and the build up to it. Maybe some 9-11 esoterica, the purposeful misidentification of the magical fae or fairy folk as rectal probing gray alien creeps and probably a lot more, but I don't want to overpromise and underdeliver, So we'll start there and see where this thing takes us. You can find Core at occultpriestess.com, and I'll be sure to link to her other various internet presences in the show notes. And don't forget, you can tune in to Hour 2 of this chat by subscribing at patreon.com forward slash interverse for five bucks a month. A real steal if you ask me, and I appreciate all the new members we've had in the last month. It's awesome to know more and more of you guys are getting that juicy extension good stuff. And since Corinne said she liked my intro for her last time and I didn't have to do a new one, I'll just paraphrase what I said at the end of the last intro, and thank you all for seeking the truth and being those beacons of higher consciousness out there and tuning in today. If you've been guided to this info, it means you're ready to take the next step and shift knowledge into wisdom, continue healing your worldview, express your source-given uniqueness, and stoke that imagination through the path of self-initiation. And now it's time to get this show on the road with the honorary headmistress of Hogwarts, Persephonic protector, and free will selector known as the occult priestess, Corinne Wilson. Thanks for joining us, Core, and welcome to Interverse. You're such a charmer, Chance. I'm really happy to be here. Hello, Interversers. And I'm so glad to be back. This is one of my favorite shows. Man, that means a lot coming from you because you've been around a block or two. <laughs> Indeed, I have. <laughs> So, I mean, I'll, I'll just ask what's really on my mind before we get into the other stuff. How's the uh, end of the world over there going? The apocalypse is going just fine um, because I watch the right you YouTubers. Well, I'll I'm, say you're in California. I'll just throw that uh, in. That's why I'm asking that, everybody. <laughs> um, my YouTubers are calling it the apocalypse. So, <laughs> Paul Romano, Pockets of the Future, we really enjoy him. Um, I've just been sticking with the group that has eyes to see and ears to hear and kind of staying in that, I don't want to call it a bubble because it's not, it's the actual truth. So I've been staying in that mindset, if you will. However, California has gone full crazy completely. Uh, I, when I first got here four years ago, I'm on a mission from God to do some work here. And when I first got here, I understood almost immediately that this was the brainwashing capital of America. Yeah, uh, I have a good buddy there who I talked to about the transhuman agenda that's rolling out in California. And irony of ironies, he got mugged the other day and wound up having to get a metal piece of metal put in his arm and i was like bro they're turning you into a transhuman already you're a you're half cyborg get out of there <laughs> that's one of the things so almost all of california is on fire but i do want to tell you i'm about 10 minutes from downtown la i can see it through my bedroom window and we have had some red skies but we're not on fire so i've had a lot of people emailing me concerned but i'm fine and remember that I was guided to be here. I told everybody when I was coming here four years ago that I was coming for the apocalypse. And I guess they didn't believe me and they thought I was only joking. I never only joke. <laughs> you joke and also you're telling the truth. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how the creator likes to roll too. I mean, 
every time that you start to really dig deep into the synchronicity all around you, it's only a short matter of observation until you start to see the hilarity in everything. <laughs> Although it's not hilarious that people are like getting their properties and their hometowns incinerated. I mean, that's far from funny. The It's more it's of like... Uh, of this. The speed since we hit, you know, February, COVID-19. I know you don't even say that. Is that a thing? Are we not saying it? I don't, I really don't give a shit. Uh, say what you will. I like to call it the beer bug because it's funnier. But exactly. again, back to joking. The beer bug hit, which we understand since the beer bug hit uh, in February, uh, we have been in lockdown this entire time. And if you're not, if it's not like, okay, you're in lockdown today, it's still a social lockdown. It's what David Icke would call the sheep keeping the other sheep in line. And of course, the order followers. And that's a lot of language that if you're not listening to all of these other uh, teachers, then you're not going to quite get the language because I think order followers is now in Mark Passio's realm. So if you don't know about that, go see Mark Passio. And it's like, I'm handing out the, what teachers people need to see depending on their level of consciousness and what they don't know yet. Ah, that's a good one to point out. I love to bring up Passio and... He actually just did a show with Crow Triple Seven, who, oh, interesting. yeah, I a really good show. Yet. They talked for two hours about the trivium and quadrivium, and Mark even like kept his cool. <laughs> well, I'm and, not familiar with those topics. <laughs> oh, really? Trivium and quadrivium? Oh man, well, that's a detour for another time, maybe. But that's something people should look into. The trivium and quadrivium are the ancient method of actually coming to the truth about something, and. I have to summarize it now that it's come up because you can never like remind people too often of how this works. But the trivium is uh, knowledge, logic and rhetoric, I believe. I mean, I could have get those mixed up in term terminology because you can classify those as like a bunch of different ways. It could be input, processing, output in computer terms. Does this but come from philosophy? It does. It's like an and old. It is it Greek? I mean, I think so. Probably originally it's probably coming from the Greek philosophers, but or at least about the priestocrats who came before the philosophers. No, I mean, this is an interesting topic, too, Those uh, are my jam. because ahead. I know I know that there's something beyond or before them. I mean, at whatever point we think something came from, it's older than that. Nothing new under the sun, <laughs> as it said. But so that's the trivium, though. And What's going on in the world is the the uh, middle step has been removed from people by and large. And so people are what it means to be transhumanized or roboticized is that the the middle step, the heart, the balancing aspect, the care is taken out of the three step process of the Trinity. And so you just have input output. That's what um, they want to make into people into. That must be the Illuminati Masonic Bohemian Grove cremation of care which you can find on jason Burmes's youtube he did a whole little segment on the cremation of care from bohemian grove so you can go ahead and look that up exactly so what is cremating your care is burning your your good stuff and where we as buddhists we will burn our karma we'll burn in the fire to refine ourselves in fact there's a beautiful saying was it Rumi possibly about the chickpea? Um, there's a cook cooking a chickpea and the chickpea is like, hey, it's too hot. This sucks. Quit doing it. And the, the teacher who's cooking the chickpea says, you know, I'm bringing out your flavor. I'm basically blossoming your flower. I am giving you what you need to bloom. And But the chickpea's pissed, right? <laughs> and I think that's a good metaphor for what we're going through now because Western society, and I don't want to call it Western because really, I mean, I've done that my whole life, but now we're global, unfortunately. Global society, aside from tribes, tribal people, are brainwashed, very much so, and it's been happening for centuries. But what people don't see is behind that veil is the problem because they think, well, I was born, this is my life, this is what I get, and then I'll die. They don't realize they've had many lives and many chances to get this correct. And if you're not starting to hear the beat of the drummer that we would like to call God, if you're not hearing that symbol, bing, 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 and getting the message, then you may be among the lost. 
you may be in hell because hell is defined as separation from the creator. You know, okay, this is something I have in my notes to talk about, actually. And I'd love to get into it because you've been a, a good influence for me on this way of thinking and uh, helping me solidify this way of thinking. So I personally, especially through like a lot of personal psychedelic experiences and and the level of synchronicity that is actually in all of our lives, once we start paying attention, seeing how severe and constant it is, uh, you know, I came to a very common sort of new age interpretation of what my life was going like for a couple of years with the uh, Alistair Crowley, uh, you are God, there, there is no God, you are God, somehow that somehow well, which that. makes no makes no sense by the way just that no, statement is a uh, he said those exact words to one of my teachers who's passed Dion fortune she went through all of his rituals and everything and at the end that's exactly what he told her there is no god you're god and she felt the biggest letdown in the universe and when i read about it i felt it too like it personally happened to me and from that moment on, I hated Aleister Crowley, and I've only gotten more information on why. Uh, yeah, he's a real, real weirdo. But <laughs> that aside, like, how can we help people understand this uh, paradox that you're in the image, you're the image of the creator, the divine spark is within you, you're an expression or property of nature or God or source. You don't have to call it God. I mean, defining it with a word is already incorrect. It's just a shorthand that we use so we can communicate. But like, how do you, how do you help people sort of rectify this uh, with the programming that a lot of, a lot of subcultures have received that actually you are God. Cause actually there's like this weird nihilism there uh, that goes on. You're saying there is no God, which means if God is reality itself and the totality of existence, then you're saying that there's nothing, that nothing exists, which is definitely disputable. <laughs> Cause I think I see something right in front of me and I'm experiencing something. So how, like, how could you be God and there be no God that makes no sense. And then if you, also do believe in God, but then believe that you're it. How can your ego, which is clearly like a separate and a smaller thing than the rest of the totality, how can that be the totality? It's, I mean, th those are sort of my questions that I use to destroy the, this very, it seems like a, a belief that would be empowering, but it's actually a very self-limiting belief. And that's something we can talk about too, to believe that you're God and that there isn't like a source that is the totality. I don't know. This is a this is a sticky topic. <laughs> I totally understand. And as a Buddhist, we just point out the obvious. Okay, God, do something. Do something miraculous. Do it now. Go ahead. You're God. Prove it. End of story, right? <laughs> End of yeah, story. that pretty much ends it. Yeah, I would say, I mean. As you were asking the question, understand that's a monkey mind going around in circles, asking a question. You can feel the drag in it. You can feel the logic trying to fit into different holes it shouldn't be fitting into. And, and that's a sensitivity that as a psychic and as a mystic, I have honed this sensitivity that even when words come out of someone's mouth, there's a vibration to it and I can feel it and I can feel, I can discern truth from ego. And some people don't understand even about the ego. So guide me in this dance step because you really took me through the monkey house and we'll have to address this once at one at a time. Okay, sure. Let's see. I think what I want to address next is that, well, first of all, I have to apologize for the fact that I'm actually saying the opposite of things I've said in past episodes of this very show and say, I can change my mind about something <laughs> and not like think that it's healthy to go around telling everyone that they are literally God. Uh, I don't think that in it's most okay. people, but I don't think most people say that usually in a bad spirit, if that makes sense. I think it's people maybe reaching for a connection to the innermost and the, you know, the, the source, if you will, and just sort of misidentifying how the fact that it lives through them isn't, doesn't equate to the fact that they are it. If that makes sense, you are a property of it. If as in you're an, ex you're something that it's doing, you're something that source is doing. <laughs> okay. <but laughs> Again, monkey mind. 
there are two points of actual light within the physical body. The third eye has an actual light and the heart has an actual light. So if you just want to go scientific, that light is God. Okay, I can I can jive it. with that. I mean also, science. That's okay. the gross physical, it's not metaphysical and it's not spiritual. That's just gross science. Yeah, and I got like a ping, like a, a loud random ear ringing when you said that. So <laughs> maybe one of my guides is like, she's got it. She's right. The light is, God is the light. <laughs> they will hit you with a stick once in a while, especially if they're good teachers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, la last yeah. time you actually saw one of my teachers, apparently, and that was pretty cool. But wonderful. okay, so <laughs> now while we're still... Before we, I think we should like sidestep this topic and just let it maybe. I don't know, I like this. I like that you're bringing me this philosophy and I get to, you know, Bruce Lee it and knock it down and tell the truth instead. I don't sure. Get to do it often. <laughs> well, we'll keep it in mind as we move forward and see how this thing that looks like it's empowering, but is actually like a type of total nihilism is we'll, we'll look and see how this connects to other things as we talk about them. And I think nihilism come from the Gnostic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a really interesting topic to me too, is how Nietzsche? Gnostic. Gnostic. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I love talking about the way Gnostic philosophy has influenced the modern world. I say all the time that simulation theory is just the materialist version of Gnosticism. And, and it's being wheeled out to a different, you know, a different demographic so it has a different paint job on it but it's been used before and will be used again and as soon as you get someone to believe that you know i mean maybe not all ancient gnostic teachings were saying this type of stuff but the way that it's presented today which is that the world is like uh created by the evil demiurge and that we our our soul is trapped in it as a form of prison imprisonment that is no different than saying like some computer simulation is holding on to our consciousness eternally in a loop it's just a different, it's no framing. different original sin you're born a sinner you're born to lose and we can go into you know, a bunch of blues songs there obviously you're born but to I mine know. gold for the anunnaki <laughs> it, yeah it's the whole thing of you're a mistake and that comes from the gnostic version of reality you are a mistake and god <laughs> is the most creative being ever, ever, ever doesn't make mistakes. There is no mistake. That's human. Right. And so when we look at the cults that are doing a lot of the influencing of the world today, like, like Freemasons, even in their own writings, you can see where guys like Albert Pike in 1871 would come out and actually say that they're, literally Gnostic and that to them, Lucifer is Sophia and Sophia is the, the real God, AKA Lucifer. And there's nothing wrong with the word Lucifer. It means light bringer. It represents Venus. It's a, you know, it's a real mind job, actually how the Roman Catholic church turned that word into an equivalent to Satan, because for before that, the pagans, Venus was the goddess of love. So now you're saying the goddess of love is the most evil thing. And that's again, taking out the care, taking out the heart, the middle, the feminine, the mother, that's the component that's being removed to create the roboticized uh, input, stimulus, output, command type of human being that uh, we're being herded towards. I say we, I'm not going there. I'm not getting in that cage, but <laughs> you know, a lot of us aren't, don't even know we're walking in. We're looking down at our phone while we walk. So, <laughs> And Lucifer is also phosphorus in alchemy and phosphorus is I, ha I don't, I'm not a scientist, I don't have the training in that realm. But phosphorus can be seen as something that creates its own light or a false light. And so in this Luciferian theosophy, Masonic Luc Lucifer, as I call him, her, <laughs> Lucifer, is the false light that creates a control paradigm over the world and Hades who is the god of the underworld in the Greek Hades kidnapped the daughter of a goddess Persephone so kidnapped Persephone and when someone asked him why why did you take this beautiful goddess down to the underworld and he said because she is phosphorus and full of light which means she could create her own light she was the 
daughter of mother nature. And so you can see how anything past the Christian, Christian below or Abrahamic and below in time, and see how I'm doing that dimensionally, I'm putting it in dimension. These lower dimensions are for lower consciousness. So those teachings are for those who can't learn beyond that. I agree with you to an extent, but actually it also depends on who's teaching you what the scripture means. <laughs> you choose your teachers, don't you? Yes, exactly. It's because your responsibility. Uh, I mean, I've I've been looking at the Bible in a whole different light, for example, as uh, instead of even being about anything supernatural at all, it's just a simple guidebook for the difference between the artificial legal person, which is also what the ego thinks it is, and the uh, true ambiguous human being, living human being in nature, if that makes sense. It and, does. I want you to know that what we're calling ego, when it is healed, which it does heal, then you become, you become, you transform, you change into a personality. And that's your higher self. And your higher self, mine's funny, <laughs> hilarious, actually. And we become the rock stars of our own lives because we're that cool. And <laughs> it's embodying your soul. And it's like, I don't know, it's soul music, it's soul food, it's freaking awesome. It, it is musical, it's dancey, it's, abstract and it's full of love and that's what i live with every day <laughs> yeah the i totally agree the ego is the part of ourselves that is temporary and sort of fictional in a sense because it's just training wheels yeah i mean okay so we get the ego that we're given to our, us by society and that's like a story that's written by our families and by our culture and handed to us. And they're like, OK, here's your script. But then you have the healed ego, which is where it's actually now become a choose your own adventure. And although the In a way. what you yeah, <laughs> you choose your direction intentionally, I should say you choose the adventure instead of choosing to be just part of a cog in a machine. But then yeah. at, at that point, you're actually refining the traits of that personality and bringing out what's good in you and trying to downplay you're that fire. You're that chickpea. Yeah, exactly. So that, at that sense, the, then the ego becomes a work of art instead of yes. uh, a, a bad fiction that was handed yes. to us as a reality. <laughs> yeah. It goes from a nightmare to a real dream. Yeah. yeah. Real dream. I'm wearing my dream theater t-shirt today. You can't exactly see the logo, but I felt that was appropriate, even though this shirt is literally falling apart. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Okay. So here's something that is a related thing. Uh, I'll try to summarize this briefly. I, I want to get your take on this as a person who knows a lot about these groups. I had an encounter with some modern OTO people, Order of the Golden Dawn. Is that the same thing? No, sorry. Order Templi Orientis, which is what came, then the Golden Dawn came out. So whatever the modern Golden Dawn is, a couple of these people that are like <laughs> high, high up and running it. Uh, and it didn't seem like. The Ciceros? What's that? The Ciceros? No. Um, oh, okay. I'll tell you off air who it was and you might oh, know okay. who I'm talking about. <laughs> but a couple of these people, they, they when I met them, they seemed nice enough. But they there was this very weird and subtle way that they basically tried to convince me that I like was a clone and this was the weirdest shit I experienced from anybody. And they told me this story about how they knew this other guy and I looked identical to him, except he was an asshole and he was so terrible, but you seem nice. And I was just like, I felt like there was this game being played where they were trying to basically like, uh, perform some kind of mastery over me and get me like hooked on what they had to say and follow them. I don't know how else to put it. And I was just like, that's cool. I'm sure there's other people in the world that look like me and maybe some of them are assholes, but I, I didn't fall for this like um, line that there's some chance factory out there cranking out other chances that are genetically identical to me. And somehow my parents know about it and <laughs> so stupid, but like what, what is go, what is going on with these secret societies today? Like how, how are their recruitment um, tricks it best exposed and keep help keep people from falling for the hive mind and the group think and just 
following their own path. Okay, so you were basically targeted, as we call that, and they were gaslighting you, as we call that, because I like to bring out the language so that people can put it into context with the real experience somebody had. Um, recruitment, recruitment isn't difficult. In fact, I think that's the thing, is that you've got to try to get in, and you've got to do what they tell you to get in. It's like, it, in fact, this is where hazing comes from. It wasn't first done in colleges. It was first done in these lodges. So all of the rituals of the hazing rituals of Hell Week, that's your life in one of those lodges until you hit a certain degree. And then you get to treat the other people, the newbies, badly. And what this mirrors is, and why I wear my hat today, because been there, done that, got the t-shirt and the hat, is bondage and domination sadomasochism so what you're doing is basically they took you for example and made you a bottom and they ganged up on you and made you small made you a bottom and then if you were compliant right then they would have kept they would have got the whips and chains out and kept going and eventually you would have become a top and become one of those jerks as I say lightly, you know, I really want to call them lots of names, but you would become basically a demon in the sense that they are a demon. So it's really easy to explain this instead of all the weird questions, you know, I think the questions are kind of up in the air. And I, cause I'm very, I'm like a sword sometimes, you know, like on point. And what I see here is that what we see here is that we've got some unhealthy people that were raised by other unhealthy people and they were hazed in childhood and they grow up and they continue to do it to others. So you do not have to be in a secret society to be in a group of torturers at all. And it's easy to point the finger and say, oh, it's, it's just this one group or it's just this one thing because people get into denial mode where it can't be everyone. It just literally can't be everyone. And sometimes you need to just flip that script and say, okay, what if it's everyone? Or, okay, what if this is, is the apocalypse? You know, and okay, what if I am God? These questions are very safe and they're questions you should be asking. I like that, especially the last part. It's, uh, it, I think it's a, like totally safe to ask yourself any question and feel it out and Asking questions is actually a, a key to sovereignty. If you're asking, you're asking. So, <laughs> <laughs> and as Freeman Fly always says, wonder without fear. And I'm Wonder Woman. I'm wondering all day. It doesn't mean that I have to have the answer now, 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 because that's the ego that is scared and is sick and says, I, I need my, my hit, please. I need my hit of good. And it's like, no, you create that good. That good is in your heart always. And sometimes you need someone to help you get to that water so that you can drink. Sure. And that's why we have, you know, counselors, teachers and helpers. Right. So one of the ways you can know that the source lives within you or God is like a spark inside of you is the conscience that you have. And I think we're seeing common sense weeded out of humanity and have been for a long time. But actually, the word common sense is synonymous to conscience because um, they, mean, they mean the same thing. Con is with or together and science is knowing or, or knowledge. And common sense <laughs> means that, you know, we know this together. It's inherent. So the right and wrong is a, something that everyone knows in terms of like how to treat each other. Maybe some more complicated, nuanced levels of right and wrong can be confusing to somebody. But like generally, you should be able to feel whether or not what you're doing is harmful to yourself or others. And if you've, if a person's completely lost that connection, that's the care cremated completely. That's the and removal. And that didn't happen just in this lifetime because they were 16 and they cut themselves and gave themselves to Satan. It happened life after life after life. And eventually, as we know, as, as Buddhists know, you can become an immortal light body being who can travel at will a golden soul but what is the other thing that you can become no one talks about that you literally become a demon 
where do demons come from? I think they come from people. Yeah, that, that's actually, man, that's a whole other topic. But when you look at, for example, what the Vatican has done over centuries, they've got stuff like, you know, the bones of supposed saints, and they even use bones and part of like the architecture of certain structures. And generally speaking, I think what we saw was a replacement of an animistic, shamanistic, worldwide, mostly worldwide indigenous knowledge of how to remain connected to the ancestors, how to help the ancestors after they've crossed over, how, you know, con staying connected to the so-called other side, which is actually still right here and within. And we've seen that replaced with a type of necromantic yeah. magic. I mean, that's I really, I really think that that's like what the, I really think that's what's gone on with a lot of these major world religions, Abrahamic religions is uh, literally turning people who die instead of into ancestors guides into demonic parasites. And, and that's how I got sleep paralysis. And they've been, people have been conditioned over lifetimes, like you said, to be like, what life is, is go to work, do your job, follow orders, rest. And I mean, I think even in the, even in the astral realm, there's got to be like literal, not literal, but figurative, uh, <laughs> like demonic call centers where they're just, you know, where they're all there right there call centers coming, in, sure. coming yeah. into the work, coming into the office. Like, who's my assignment today, boss? Who am I going to plague with suicidal thoughts or whatever? But yeah, who will I haunt? Exactly. <laughs> and usually it's by bloodline. So I'm pretty sure the demon I fought with was within my bloodline. Yeah. And at that point, you're actually also healing a fragment of your own self continuum. No, not really. Oh, many you of us have incarnated into cursed bloodlines. Like I'm related to the astronaut and Senator John Glenn. So we incarnate into these cursed bloodlines to clean it up and to help anybody who had been born into it, but not a part of it, because that does happen once in a while. But we were born on purpose to clean up the bloodline, the karma. And it's just, I'm of the karma kagyu lineage of Tibetan Buddhism and have been for many lifetimes. Again, um, this time I get to be a Western idiot. Yay, because <laughs> America is a big deal this time. But I want you to know that we've been fighting demons since the inception of demons. And even in Buddhism, the demons protect the Dharma, which is a totally different aspect of what a demon can be. So there's so much information that if you've only been studying the Abrahamic religions, you are at the zero point and, and you're about to begin. Yeah. And I mean, in many senses, you remain at the zero point forever once you recognize the infinity of truth <laughs> that the, but we can know things. We can know things like that's an important aspect of uh, life that a nihilistic view removes and so we're we skirted around rituals a little bit but let's talk a little more about rituals because there's not just these um, secret society lodge hazing rituals to consider but let's talk about how that spilled out into the the muggle world and how uh, yeah, actually like what we're has come to the entire muggle world he's not just messing with magicians anymore was that the last harry potter was he trying to take over the whole world i mean probably i, I assume okay, well, eventually he wanted yeah, the whole world <laughs> yeah that was probably his goal at some point to subjugate world and enslave order, world order. enslave them i like sauron i think he's a way more oh, badass wow. dark lord <laughs> i only know the eyeball like i i don't I don't know that shows that well, the Lord of the Rings or something, right? In the third book of the Lord of the Rings, this isn't portrayed in the movie, but actually the, the white wizard Saruman who fell and became corrupted comes to the Shire. And this is only in the book, the Shire, which is the peaceful little nature hamlet that all the hobbits are from. And he uh, gets the hobbits to set up their own little miniature NWO. And he's got like police and, there's this entire sub story that's not even in the movies where the hobbits have to come back and free the land from the mind parasite of the, the type of like police state mentality that this guy came and imposed just out of spite, just to spite the hobbits. He knew that it wouldn't last and that they would come kick his ass. But anyway, uh, what's going on with, with 2020s rituals and things that leading up to 2020 are, are uh, people actually 
engaging in behaviors that signify their status as the bottom, as you put it, as the bottom. And being groomed, we call it being groomed, the FBI, the CIA, all those assholes call it being groomed. Pedophiles call it being groomed. So you you would agree, though, that like the the masks and the temperature guns and uh, all all the various little like the hand gallons of hand sanitizer, all that stuff is in some way signifying like you're you're dirty, you're filthy, you're profane. Honestly, I I haven't thought about it that deeply because it's all paranoid BS and it's an, I can't give it the time of day in the sense that I will really use my brain. <laughs> but it is BDSM and I didn't want to admit it. I didn't want that to be true. But I look back at my life and the training I've had and I understand this is probably true. I, I understand that this is what's going on. And for people not to realize that when they're at home by themselves, looking in the mirror, putting on a mask, for them to be that gone, dude, it's like they have Alzheimer's. They're already gone and we literally cannot do anything for those people. I hope that's not true. <laughs> but are not only do- that God. Only yeah. God can touch those people. If you make an overture to help, you're going to get gang stalked, gaslit, and you're going to get attacked. This is not your job. Now, you got somebody on the fence, somebody's like, oh, I don't know. You can help. You can assist. But you ain't going to make anyone do anything. That's, that's what we cannot do. Free will, butterfly wings. Yeah, that's the true story. I mean, of course, you can never make them make any change. But I are you saying that just by like li- living as an example uh, is going to get you targeted? Is that something that you think? Oh, yeah, definitely. If you are working for the light in any capacity whatsoever, if you're just a good neighbor, you're going to get attacked. How might that look like for someone, someone like me, for example, what what kind of things would maybe be going down I'm, other than occasionally being uh, solicited by Freemasons and Golden Dawn people. <laughs> Your issue mostly is uh, disappointment, depression, the low vibe, getting into the, the darker realms of uh, the mind. And the thing is, at your age, you're, you're fine, you're perfect. But as you grow, the heart is going to take over more and more. Right now, you're still in a defensive logic mind, which is, like I said, perfect for your age. Defensive logic mind. It must make sense. Two and two is four. Blah, blah. Form, form. Earth, earth. (laughs) Math. So you still have a bit of the science logic going on that keeps you from the actual mystical. Well, that makes sense in a functional level because what we're talking about when you break it down just to the pure duality in nature of yin and yang, that is the left brain, right brain divide that still needs to be bridged and healed. In your head, but not in mine. No, of course. (laughs) I have this little story I love to tell. It's very short. So the right and left sides of the brain, masculine and feminine, sun and moon, God and goddess, they they argue when you have an ego. They, They kill each other when you have an ego. Um, when you're healing the ego, you get to know them as your parents, your, your God and your goddess, right? Or your mom and your dad, your parents. And then you allow them to say, yes, you can have ice cream today. No, you cannot have ice cream today. We are going to clean today. No, we're not. You know, that's negotiations. Once these two, the man and the woman, get together and fall in love and kiss, then they have the baby of the third eye. And so that's the birth of your actual being able to see in this world. Until those two are in bed together, you're never going to have the baby. But some of us who have done this lifetime after lifetime are born always seeing, like we can't not see. And that's one of the issues why I had sleep paralysis, because I couldn't not see. That's an interesting thing to discuss again i think we touched on it in the previous episode but this is something that you would consider sort of being targeted as well but just astrally yeah so that was more than likely an ancestor i haven't it's not something i've been able to pigeonhole and talk to like many entities that are actually real 
Um, this was a spooky specter from the hell dimension, and I did not know hell was a real dimension. Even growing up as an adult, even though I went there every night, it wasn't this flamey, hot place, so I didn't think it was hell. But it was the ghost realm. It's where the dead people are and where demons live. And like I said in my video, The Nightmare Girl, who left the door to hell open in my dream time? And as you can see, the poster behind me is of The Nightmare by Rodney Asher. And that's the film I'm in about sleep paralysis. But it just, I didn't want to believe in demons. I had some new age teaching to get out of my head. Even though I experienced it, it was not acknowledged. And when the world does not acknowledge that something is happening to you, it almost seems as if it's not. And I've grown up and I'm an adult now and I'm better at, explaining myself and saying, hey, this is real, and I don't care if you've never seen it. It's real. But they gave me the key to find out about ancestral haunting, where demons come from, what is evil. So I've got the answer to all of those questions. Okay, well, I want to know how this idea relates to both the the fae or the fairy and the gray or the, the alien. Like, this is... I personally seem to be able to intuit that most of what we've been presented as the alien story is totally Hollywood. However, that doesn't mean that I personally haven't seen UFOs. I take people's word for it when they say they saw a UFO. There's even pretty good video of some UFOs and some that's questionable, but what's the, I've tried to bridge this gap in other conversations, but I'd love to see what you can tell us in terms of like what happened here to shift people from having fairy experiences and encounters to gray aliens. Because I can say all day that I don't think that like we're being invaded by outer space aliens and, you know, experimented on and all that. But that doesn't change the fact that some people have that experience mentally or psychically or in a, you know, in an inner experience. Okay. So on my WordPress, the Cult Priestess WordPress, there is Fay or Gray, the fight for the narrative. Okay? And I just want to read the first little part. We are in a war of words, a war of worlds. Words cast spells. We are vulnerable as a collective to the powers that control our cultural narrative. So we can go back really quick to sleep paralysis. And I was in that film. Well, I went and I took ayahuasca, mother ayahuasca, and I saw a different type of entity over one of my fellow travelers. And that entity was a hat man. And so I'm in the film called The Hat Man speaking about that. But what that showed me was I saw the, the shadow guy my whole life but then i saw a shadow guy with a hat it's fedora i was like wait a minute fashion i'm a buddhist i know form is trickery <laughs> you know there is no form form is not real form is a representation of something else and so i really understood like a satari like an instant knowledge of the, the fashion of darkness it changes fashion and that's how it amalgamates that's how it becomes the chameleon and as a Jedi, I understand that we feel the force. It's either a dark force or a light force. We feel the force. It's either love or absence of light, absence of love, right? And people within, they think they're afraid of death. But honestly, the truth is they're afraid of the absence of love, the absence of light. That is not death. That's the second death that they're afraid of, which comes from William Blake, which you brought up. Uh, before we came on air. And William Blake speaks about the second death, the death of what could have been a golden soul, what could have been an immortal, but it went the demon route instead. So that's, they don't get, they will no longer be reincarnated. They will no longer be invited back to earth school to learn. And I believe their consciousness will be deleted completely. I believe like they never existed. But that's the way time, if you don't understand how time works, then you won't understand how God cleans the game at the end when we're done, we're going to put the chessboard up and we're done. 
it's because evil never existed. But we're not there yet, so that can be very confusing, especially if you have a logical mind. Yeah, I, I mean, I can I can work with that. I mean, if you uh, delete something from existence, that means it never it existed. Never it was never there. But so all those tears, they say God's going to wipe every tear. Well, how about undoing those things completely? Because the soul learned the lessons. You understand? You can't take that away from a soul ever. So once you're golden, you have no need for all the darkness and it goes away. But these are things that immortals speak of, not muggles. <laughs> well, so... There's a quote in your article, Fair Gray, from William Blake that says, They know not of regeneration, but only of generation. Fairies, nymphs, gnomes, and genie, four elements. Unforgiving and unalterable, these cannot be regenerated, but must be created, for they know only of generation. These are the gods of the kingdoms of earth. Uh, Blake is super around. mystical. So, does this have to do with what you're describing? That some, like, what is the the regeneration and generation thing. So what we're talking about things that are not immortal, literal, not immortal. So a fairy will die and not reincarnate. You see in the mineral kingdom. So we must understand that Blake is talking about alchemy and he's talking about the mineral kingdom. When I talk to a flower, I can see a fairy. You understand there's a consciousness that we call fae, okay? So that it's a realm. But it comes from, if you like, if you're scientific, well, that's true. The more pure form of our rocks, stones, and crystals are fairies and gnomes. This is a representation of a being on another plane of existence. Alchemy. Like, like an imprint, yeah. Yeah, I've got a couple of friends in the form of stones around me at all times, too. Yes. And I've felt the type of, I mean, I would say I've felt communicated with from these things, but I have felt like they were in the room, the way that like you might have your back to a door and someone comes in quietly, but you're like, someone's here and you know. Let me attempt to explain this because it's, it's amazing. And no one, I've never heard it explained. So let's say you have a god and a goddess, or the gods and the goddesses, the pantheons, and they wanted to get closer to earth, but could not incarnate. So we have the different kingdoms of the earth, of the mineral realms, and uh, all the earth, air, fire, water realms. And then how could the god essence sources, masculine and feminine, incarnate or get into or touch this beautiful thing that they saw called the earth. Like how, how do we do that? Well, they had to do kind of what Sophia did. Now, Sophia was a young goddess, didn't know how to create and apparently created something that was a mistake because she was young and, you know, she was a kid playing dolls. I don't get that story. It doesn't fit with this one. Um, gods and goddesses are in love and they fall in love with the earth and they know the only way to get there to touch it is to have children. And that's the, the generation. So you can say that the gods and goddesses, a few steps forward, I'm not going to explain it all, but a few steps down had fairies and gnomes and unicorns and all of these things as their children on this fairy planet, if you will this magical, beautiful thing that came before vibrational 3D Earth, before it. How do you think the minerals were created if not by fairies? So you see, seeding the Earth is, is kind of a BS story when you think of it physically. You don't physically see the planet. You do it multidimensionally through metaphysics. And I know this is probably too far for most people, but let's just say that that's how we eventually manifested on earth. And some of us still have the fairy souls. And I know a lot of, I can hear a lot of people enjoying that thought right now <laughs> that we do have fairy souls and we can become immortal because that's what Blake was saying is they're only a generation. They can't become real. 
But if you put them in the incarnation cycle as people on the planet, then they can. And that's the exciting part to us ancient Greeks is that uh, the fairies can become gods and goddesses and play with us. This is interesting. So, I mean, I won't try to like break this down into too far into logic land, but I think I'm following you that uh, there's something very different about these beings existing represented as a stone versus getting the keys to the car, which is the, the incarnation in flesh, carne, flesh, <laughs> meat, the meat suit. And when I healed my inner child, she came to me as a fairy and said, I've always been a fairy. I was never a human girl. I was like, wow, that's really empowering. Thank you. <laughs> that is interesting, too, because I've had psychedelic experiences where I felt like whatever it was, whatever signal it was that I was beaming into this body to uh, remote control it or whatever was coming from a big old crystal. And I felt that way. Yeah. So who knows? But you I mean, I could be a fake boy. Ah, probably. <laughs> but you're not a gray alien. And that's getting back to the fashion of darkness, the fashion of evil. Everything I was just talking about is love and pure and beautiful. And this is the joke clown side of that, the evil side. It's the flip side. And that's all you get on Earth so far is the apple lesson of can you discern good from evil, the apple lesson from the Abrahamics. And if you can't get past that, then you're not going anywhere. You can't go anywhere else in the universe. You cannot be in the fifth element film and you can't go to Flossman Paradise. And it's like simple too, the good and evil thing, but it's been made complicated, I think. And the thing is, is that we're seeing so many, I think that, well, in Buddhism, we know that you can choose two ways of being Buddhist. You can take a vow that keeps you here life after life, helping as a volunteer, and that's called the Bodhisattva. Or you can take the big vehicle, like the, the road everyone takes, which is just leave. If you're done and you're enlightened, then just go home. But that has caused a problem imbalance on earth because all the people, a lot of people that reached enlightenment didn't come back to help. So we are stuck with the end of the class with very few people graduating in this harvest that your other guest was talking about, which I also understand is true. But you got, you also have to understand most of these people failed life after life after life, they're failures. And to reach out, you're going to get hurt because this is the serious game now. We got to get serious now and we got to seriously love those who can be loved and seriously abandon those who cannot. Yeah, abandon is a harsh word, but I get what you mean that uh, it's more like, I mean, if, if somebody doesn't want to accept the self-evident truth of reality, which is that. It's not just your grandma. I'm talking about people who are literally going to be turning into demons in front of us. Yeah. Which is already what happened. Yeah. I mean, I admit I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen it to a degree. And it's usually through some mechanism that is where they're self-destroying, where they're pillaging purpose, their own not. body. Yeah. Will, they call it willful ignorance in some schools. And I mean, we all have probably still got some willful ignorance lessons left in our our curriculum to deal with but at least knowing that there is a choice to be made and you're not like at the whims of your addictions or you're not you know you don't have to stay in an angry and closed off person forever but okay so i want to in the second hour talk about continue talking about this idea of the alien versus something that's more natural and ancestor based and and look at the idea of star seeds from a different context of maybe how about instead of star seeds, it's actually just ancestors in a different phase of Earth that seem so advanced or different that you thought it was aliens. But we'll get to that in the second hour. In our last five minutes together, which is not really as much as I intended to leave for you, I wanted you to talk about how people can work with you. And I know that we've had some audience members reach out to you and you've been super kind and spent time with them. And I wanted to uh, give you a chance to lay that out for the listeners today in case there's anyone that's feeling like, man, I have a lot of questions for 
core. And uh, I want everyone to know that you're very accessible. Yeah, I am extremely accessible. Just reach out and touch me, babe. And that's one of, part of my job is that I must be accessible for those who are ready. Because like I said, we're in this end game, basically. Um, and I really enjoyed the clients that I've gotten that listen to your show because they are superior people. So I just thank you for that. <laughs> I am Corinne Wilson. Please follow me on Twitter at Occult Priestess. And also, I'm occultpriestess.com, and I have a YouTube, and this will be up on my YouTube, but all you have to do is go to my occultpriestess.com, shoot me an email, and we'll set up your appointment. Everything's right there, easy to do, no big deal. And I'm also interested in meeting other YouTubers, other people that are on Twitch. I want more community, darn it. So come and get me, boys <laughs> and girls. Yeah, and Cora's hopped in the Discord for Interverse a few times. Uh, there's some nice tribe happening there. Love that group. And I want to see more of you in there, even though maybe I don't drop in and say hi as much as I should. I'm, I'm always watching. I'm that eye in the sky on the Discord. But yeah, people reach out to Cora, uh, work with her, donate to her mission and receive, you know, some really excellent wisdom transmissions at the same time. And uh, we even have, I'm sure, some testimonials you could get from uh, <laughs> from your fellow tribe members if you ask about it in in this Discord. But yeah, thanks for giving us that rundown of all the things we talked about in this first hour. I'm sure we could, <laughs> man. I'm sure that we barely scratched the surface compared to what is all there, but. We can't oh, tell you everything. everything. All we can do is point you in a direction. And then you've got to make the, the deeper connections yourself. You've got to think the thoughts yourself. You know, it can't think our thoughts all the time. It's all about you. It really is. I swear to God, it's all about you. <laughs> this whole thing, this whole drama. Yeah, yeah it is. Love yourself or die trying. <laughs> That's great. We'll sign off with that and we'll see the plus tribe in the second hour. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. We made it to the end of the show. Basically the end anyway. I've still got a few minutes with you here to tell you some things that are on my mind. First of all, the first thing is not a thing. It's uh, her and it's Corinne. She's awesome. Really appreciate her coming on. And I hope you guys go find a way to get connected with Corinne online through either her cult priestess YouTube channel or find her on Facebook or get her email address off her website, get in touch with her. She's very approachable, very, very cool person and meaningful conversation to be sure. And a lot of fun. It's fun to have podcast friends that are not just like a guest that it's the first time I've ever talking to them that we've kind of got a rapport and she's one of those people We've become good pals on the internet, so I can assure you that it's possible if you find her to be really cool, you can definitely get in touch with her and she'd like that. So this was a great episode in the plus extension. If you didn't catch that, we talked about ritual practices some more specifically kind of what those look like on the light side versus the dark side. Uh, we talked about Corinne's initiation into esoteric Buddhism from her South African guru. That was interesting. And we talked about star seeds and soul walk-ins and being from somewhere other than here. And that conversation, that part of the conversation, didn't exactly go the way I expected it to. I, it was interesting, though. So there was a, way more than that in plus, but I didn't really take good notes. And so <laughs> that's all I'm going to bring up. But I know that it was great. And you can definitely get in there very easily. $5 a month, patreon.com forward slash interverse. And there you go. You got the second hour of this one and every other one that we have ever done, or at least for quite a long time. And I think there's probably like 120, 130 plus episodes at this point. So that's a lot. And we also do the monthly chat with uh, patrons that are at the $12 tier. That's happened twice now. We're going to do a third one in the middle of the month here in September. For people on the $12 and up tier, we actually get together for an hour a month and do like a group hangout podcast. And it's really cool. And as a plus member, just a regular $5 plus member, you get to hear the recordings of those. So it's like a bonus monthly episode. So you're getting the second hour every week and you're getting a bonus episode each month. I say every week, I guess maybe 
You may have noticed this week I was a little late getting a podcast to you, or you might consider it to be that it's actually the next week now and I just missed a week, but yeah, the, these things happen. I took it a little slower through September so far, and I'm kind of going to continue to do so because I'm going to be out of town for over a week at the end of the month for a trip that I'm going on. And I haven't been on any trips all year. Didn't go on very many last year or the year before, but I did have a few. But this one is going to be fun. And so if you're in the uh, Colorado, Denver area, (laughs) shoot me a message. Maybe I can do something fun, like take me on a cool hike. I don't know. But I'll be there through the end of September, beginning of October. And that will mean that a regular episode in that time is not going to get published. But I haven't really taken any vacations or breaks other than unintentional somewhat like, you know, breaks between episodes that are maybe a few days. But I've been continuing to work on the show a lot. So I think a vacation is probably fine. No one out there is going to blame me for it. But I would like to keep your valuable patronage, those of you who are plus members, just remember that even if you haven't got a new episode for this week, go find something cool in the archive to chew on because there's a lot there. And if you've actually made it through all of the archives and listened to all of it, then you're probably so awesome that you are going to keep the support going anyway, even if there isn't a new one this month. But of course, as a host of this show that's starting to really grow and take off, at least comparatively to what it was, you know, when I first started out, uh, <laughs> the it's really you know an a issue of being a little nervous of like okay can I really just take a a little bit of time to go slower than I was going and of course I know it's going to be okay there's nothing the wrong thing won't happen and I don't actually even have to do this I'm doing this because I want to so anyway I knew you guys out there would be cool about it but if you do want more of me in the interim there was an interview I did with a excellent chap named John Coleman. And on his YouTube, it's just John Coleman, a conversation with chance of interverse. So I will link that on my website. I'll put a link to it in the show notes of this episode. I'll probably mirror it to the RSS feed. So you'll see it there later as well. But if you want to hear that sooner than later, go ahead and go find the link that I just described or just Google a conversation with chance of interverse. It's interview 64 on his podcast series. And I thought that was kind of cool because I'm really into the I Ching and 64 is an important number to the I Ching. What we talked about was um, education, kind of an off topic for me. I mean, I'll bring it up tangential to other things, but I am pretty aware of how the education system is designed and why it's designed that way. Once you kind of get the basics of occult knowledge, which is in largely just a psychology (laughs) and how the psyche works of the overall mind of the universe, not just like one person. But once you kind of get these realm dynamics, then you can see what's going on in these situations like education. And it was fun for me to get into a flow state with Mr. Coleman and talk about what I see going on and the history of education in the country as we know it and where that came from and how people reacted to it when it first showed up. And yeah, all kinds of Really interesting stuff in that episode of his show, and I hope you check it out. Also, if you are wanting to support Interverse in some way other than the $5 a month or in addition to the $5 a month for a plus subscription on Patreon, you can come in and talk to us on the Discord chat. That's fun. There's a link to that on the website and links to everything I'm about to talk about in the show notes, of course. You can get an Interverse t-shirt or a poster at the store from my website. You can... Shop at secretenergy.com from the referral link that's in the show notes of any recent episode. And that's kind of like you've probably heard podcasters with an Amazon affiliate link. Same thing with Secret Energy, except instead of it being evil, it's pretty cool. You're supporting uh, yourself with the purchase of some kind of supplement that is going to be hopefully quite ideal for where you're currently at in your journey. And then you're also giving me a nice little kickback and it doesn't cost you anything extra. And if you think, hey, that's not fair, I want to be an affiliate, well, you can become one. And if you do that also off of the referral link from my show, then that helps me too and doesn't detract anything from you. So they're doing great things, trying to help people generate karma-free wealth, if that's even possible. You can also leave a five-star review for Interverse on iTunes. You know what? Let me just check real quick if there's any new ones since the last time I checked. And if there are, nope, no new ones. I like to read them though. And I'll do that in an outro sometime. If you write something nice, I'll read it because it made me feel good and I like to be praised. 
And of course, you can always just make a straight up donation through PayPal. That's linked in there as well in the show notes. And if you want to send me some euros or whatever you got, I guess I'll take it. I mean, I got to eat. That's uh, true. (laughs) Anyway, it's been a fun time talking to you guys in this outro and probably actually more fun talking to Corinne because I wasn't talking to myself and to a microphone without anyone across from me. But all in all... Great show this time around. Loved it. And I'm going to play us out with a song by Pure Colors called Stereo B, which I thought was appropriate because in the out or the plus extension, we were talking about star seeds and we we're talking about Sirius B. Anyway, I love this song. So I'm going to play us out with it. And I'm out of here. Thanks for listening, everybody. Much love. Bye bye. Don't you understand? This, this is important to me. It's just music.